the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in, everybody, and don't just come in, but come in with your praise. Come on. Come in with your worship, even where you are. Give God glory where you are. Give God honor where you are. The Bible says, make a joyful noise, all ye lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving. Come on, enter to his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Come on, one and all, come in with your praise. Come in with your worship. Give God glory right where you are. Make your space into a sanctuary. Come on, open up your mouth. I don't even have to see you. But if you want to be seen, giving God glory. You can show yourself giving God praise. Come on, open up your mouth wherever you are. I don't even have to hear you. Come on, make your space into the sanctuary. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Come on. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Wherever you are. Come on, people of God. Just open up your mouth and give God praise. Give God glory. He's worthy of it. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Lord is worthy. As you're coming in, don't come in with any worry. Don't come in with any stress. Don't come in with any fear. Don't come in with any issues, but come in with your praise. Come on. Come on with your worship. Come on with your glory. Give God glory right where you are. Let's pray real quick. Father God, we honor you. We bless you. We glorify you. Your name is a strong tower where the righteous can run in and be safe. Father God, there's no one like you. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end, and we worship you. You are God of all gods. You are King of all kings. You are Lord of all lords, and we worship you. We don't come for any other reason. We don't come for any other the purpose, but to give your name glory, but to give your name honor, but to give your name praise. And we say, Father God, have thine own way, even now in the name of Jesus. Let your presence be felt in every home. Let your presence be felt through every screen. Let your presence be felt through every phone in the name of Jesus. There's nothing too hard for you. There's no place your presence can't reach. For in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. At this right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. Let there be freedom in every home, even now, in the name of Jesus. Let there be freedom in every room right now, in the name of Jesus. Let there be freedom where your people are. In the name of Jesus, let everyone be free to worship. In the name of Jesus, let everyone be free to praise you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you in advance. I give your name glory. Even now, Father God, bless your man servant as he preaches your word. Use him to your glory and to your honor. And we won't forget to give your name all the glory, honor, and praise. Come on, people of God. Welcome. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. And as I'm welcoming you, how about you welcome the Lord where you are? Woo. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus, welcome the Lord into your space. And how you welcome him with your praise. For he inhabits the praises of your people, of his people. One more time, y'all. Come on. Open up your mouth and give God praise. I don't have to hear you. I don't have to see you. But the Lord hears you. The Lord sees you. Come on. Open up your mouth and give God praise. He's worthy of it. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I have the honor and the priv privilege to serve you this morning as your MC. I don't usually serve in this capacity, but it is an honor to serve in Jesus' name. I want to give honor to God who's the head of our life, amen, and to our pastor, our bishop, who is sitting like the cool man that he is in Jesus' name, to the Bishop Horace C. Michael, God bless you, sir, to our First Lady, God bless you, First Lady Michael, it is good to see you all in Jesus' name, and to everyone else in their respective places, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, everybody, the Lord is worthy to be praised. The Lord is worthy to be adored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Then let's get started in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to have our hymn. Amen. Praise the Lord. By our lovely missionary Bernadette Tinley. And right after that, we will have our welcome address by our first lady, Tania Michael. 
receive ye them in that order in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. In a time as today, we have to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the saith the lord jesus jesus how i trust him how i prove him more and more jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more i'm so glad i learned to trust him precious jesus savior friend and i know that he is with me will be with me to the end oh how sweet to trust in jesus just to trust his cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood jesus jesus how i trust him how i prove him more and more jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more yes tis sweet to trust in jesus just from sin and self to cease just from jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace jesus jesus how i trust him how i prove him more and more jesus jesus precious jesus all for great to trust him more jesus jesus how i trust you how i prove you more and more jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more everybody say jesus jesus how i trust you how i prove you more and more jesus jesus precious jesus all for grace to trust you more everybody say jesus jesus how i trust you how i prove you more and more jesus jesus precious 
precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust you more. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding and all of thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. At this time, praise the Lord, we will have our welcome address by none other than our first lady, our first lady to me and Michael. Receive her in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. Truly, we glorify the name of Jesus on this morning, and he is worthy to be praised this afternoon, rather. Praise the Lord. There's just a song in my heart, and the word says, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Are you free on this morning? I am free. And because I'm free, I can praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm no longer bound. Whereas before I was bound, but the chains that had me bound are no longer in my life. I can smile again. Hallelujah. Why doesn't everybody just put a smile on your face for Jesus? Hallelujah. Truly, I welcome you into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you to the presence of the Lord, to the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. And we welcome you into the presence of God. God bless you on this morning in Jesus' name. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Even in the comment section, if you would like, let's just put that what Lady Michael said. Let's just praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Before we go further, I just want to read this into your hearing. Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Growing up, we used to sing a song, I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. And he loves me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just put in the comment section, I love Jesus, and he loves me. Amen. Praise the Lord. This has been fun for me so far. I haven't served in this capacity as of yet virtually over Zoom to be the MC, but it's been fun. But unfortunately, it's about time for me to relinquish my responsibility. We have come to the most important part of any service, and that's the word of the Lord. The Bible says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How can they hear unless there be a preacher? How can he preach unless he be sent? Praise the Lord. We know we have a sent man by the way of our pastor, our bishop, R.C. Michael. Praise the Lord. We thank God for him and his leadership and his fatherhood and his pastorship. He's the under shepherd of our souls. Praise the Lord. But we also know that the Lord has sent some sons into the ministry. And so it is an honor on behalf of a son to be able to say we can help our pastor, our father, our leader in any capacity that he acts. And so we have a trusted son, praise the Lord, in this in the form of Minister Hezekiah Tinley, who also serves as our junior pastor. But before he comes to break forth the bread of life, we have a special treat for you all in Jesus' name. Put in the comments, tell your virtual neighbor, we have a special treat. Praise the Lord. We have none other than our minister, Ronald Campbell, coming to us this morning to sing our sermonic solo. And right after our minister, Ronald Campbell, y'all know who that is, right? That, that's a familiar face, right? We know exactly who that is. Our minister, I tell him a lot of times, I wish there was two of him 
so we could keep him in New York and he could be in Connecticut too. I wish there was two of them, but since there's, there's not two of them, we honor him and we thank God for him. And he's coming. And right after our minister Ronald comes and ministers to us to, through song, our minister Hezekiah Tinley will come and minister to us by way of the word of God. Receive ye them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord and good morning, everyone. I bring you greetings from Hartford, Connecticut, by way of Urban Hope Refuge Church, where Pastor Ashley Johnson is the pastor and his lovely wife, Lady Melinda Johnson, is the first lady. I am so honored and so excited to be with Beulah again, the tab again. Um, I enjoyed um, thus far what has already happened, and I know what's coming is definitely going to be good. Won't be before you long. It just simply says, you get the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We want you to be glorified, Lord. Oh, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. Oh, yes, in my life, be glorified. Be glorified. Come on and help me sing it. Be glorified. Ooh. Be glorified. In my life. Yes. We need you to be. We want you to be. In my life, say, we want you to be glorified. Whatever we do, whatever we say, in my life, yeah, be glorified. Ooh, oh, you get the glory. You get the praise, you take the honor, and I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get all of my praise, hallelujah. It all belongs to you, and I want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get all of the praise. It all belongs to you, oh God. I've got to say thank you. You get the glory. You get all of the praise. You take the honor. And I want to say thank you. We say thank you, Jesus, for every way that you've made. And you take the honor. I just gotta say thank you. You are the best thing, the best thing in my life. So you take the honor, God. I just gotta say thank you. We say thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we do. From the bottom of my heart. We say thank you. We say thank you. It makes room for all. Those two words make room for all. And we say thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh we lift our hands in spite of the circumstances. Say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. And yes, and we declare you get the glory. You get all of the praise. It belongs to you, oh God. We will say thank you. From our hearts we say. From our hearts we say. It belongs to you, oh God, and we've got to say thank you. Wherever you are, just lift your hands right there and begin to worship the King. He is worthy. He is worthy. So worthy of it all. You get the glory. When I walk in 
God, and we've got to say faith. Oh, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. I want them to see you, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be glorified. Yeah. Oh, here's, here is my life. Be lifted high, oh God. Be lifted high. Come on and say, here's my life. I present it to you, Lord. It's a living sacrifice, Jesus. I want them to see you, Lord God. Oh, 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 here's my life. Be magnified. Ooh, oh, be magnified. Here's my life. You can say it from your heart. Be magnified. Be magnified. Yeah. And so we lift our hands to you, oh God, and we worship you, and we praise your name, because you deserve the honor, and all of the glory, and all of the praise. I want my life to be a living testimony of your goodness, of your grace, and of your mercy, and most of all, of your love. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise my heart my mind and my soul belongs to you you paid the price for me way back on calvary that's why i praise you and i lift you up and i magnify your holy name that's why my heart is filled, oh, that's why my heart is filled, yes, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Everyone, just uh, lift your hands wherever you are. I feel the presence of God. Amen. Just lift your hands wherever you are. And our brother Ronald, Minister Ronald, he sang a song and uh, this is a song that popped into my spirit. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Today, come on, sing it with me. In my life. Lord, be glorified, be glorified in my life, Lord, be glorified today, oh, in my life, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified in my life, Lord, be glorified today, oh, in my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified in my life lord be glorified today that's why i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name 
That's why my heart is filled with praise. Just lift your hands right now. I believe that God is on this Zoom call. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Receive from the Lord. We're going to stay right here just for a minute. Just receive from the Lord right now. Wherever you are, just receive from the Lord. I know everyone might not be in a place where you can turn on your cameras, but let's just begin to praise him. If you can turn on your camera, turn on your camera. But let's just begin to open up our mouth and let's praise the Lord right where we are. The presence of God will fill your room. It's going to fill Hallelujah, your area where you are. Wherever you are, if you just open your mouth and just lift your hands and begin to receive from the Lord, I promise you that God will come into where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you have to do is open up your heart, open up your mind, open up your spirit to receive what it is that you need from the Lord. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. Whatever it is that you need, it's right here in his presence. For in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are our pleasures forevermore. I know we got to get to the word, but I almost don't want to move from this point of this right now. Because someone is, somebody is receiving what it is that they need from the Lord. We honor him. We thank him for he reigns forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you yet again. We come to you one more time to worship and to praise your name. Lord, I thank you that you are with me. Thank you, oh God, that you are with me in the preparation of this word. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you will be with me now in the delivery of the word that you have given us. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you have showered us down with your anointing already. We feel the rain of your spirit. We feel, oh God, showers of blessings. Oh God, hallelujah. We thank you and we magnify your most holy name for your presence, for that's all that we look for. That's all that we need. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you will bless your word, allow it to touch every single heart. Thank you for this opportunity and I magnify your most holy name. Drench my tongue with now your anointing as I deliver unto your people the word of God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We honor the Lord for everyone in, in their respective places today. I'm so glad to be able to have this opportunity to uh, deliver unto you the word of God on this morning. And I would be remiss if I do not honor God, who is certainly the head of my life. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I am nothing. And I honor him for all that he is to me and all that he is doing. I thank God for my pastor. Let's give God praise for our pastor, the angel that the Lord has sent unto us in the person of the Bishop Horace Michael. We honor the Lord for him and we thank God um, that he is still in the land of the living. We do not take that for granted. We thank God that he has breath in his body and he is alive and doing well. And we say to the Bishop, long live, the bishop. We honor the Lord for him. Thank God for our first lady. Let's praise God for our first lady, Lady Tania Michael. We honor the Lord for her. I thank God for my mother, uh, missionary. Amen. Bernadette Tinley, we honor the Lord for her. Thank God for my dad, Minister Ota Tinley. Thank God for him to our uh, master of ceremonies today. You know, if you want to come and do it next week, you, you sure enough can. Uh, Minister Seth Tinley, we honor the Lord for him and to amen our, our, our guest, which is really not guest at all. He is family. We honor the Lord for Minister Ronald Campbell. That's our family. Amen. And we honor the Lord for him. Into the word of God, I do not want to be before you long. I don't take this lightly. Amen. But I don't want to be long at all. Um, and uh, you will understand probably. Um, what, I, what I'm getting ready to read will be the length of my message today. Um, but let's go into the book of Daniel chapter 6. Um, Daniel chapter 6, um, verse 22. I just want to read the first four words in the B clause. Just want to read the first four words in the B clause of Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. Let's read today. Daniel chapter 6, verse 
22. Just the first four words in the B clause of the text. And the B clause of the text, it says, shut the lion's mouths. Shut the lion's mouths. I want to preach to you from the subject, Lord, please shut the lion's mouth. I want to preach to you just for the few, for next few moments, Lord, please shut the lion's mouth. Please shut the lion's mouth. People of God, we understand that this book of Daniel, it is very important as we talk about um, the prof, the prophetic things that are happening in the world today. Understand that the book of Daniel is definitely a prophetic book in its own right. Daniel, as we are introduced to him, we are introduced to Daniel and his friends in the first chapter of the book of Daniel. And we see that the Bible says um, that the king spake unto the master and he told him that in verse three, it says that the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. It says that children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, well skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Understand that this is, amen, of the king speaking unto the master on behalf of Daniel and his friends. Let me stop here and then let you know, firstly, that your reputation precedes you. Your reputation precedes you. That is why you must have a good reputation. To get to where God, sometimes to get to somewhere in life, God is going to cause you to not say a word. The Bible does not suggest unto us that Daniel said anything to the king. He was spoken of on, he was spoken about on behalf of someone else. And let me just share with you that God is getting ready to allow your reputation to proceed you. People are going to speak well of you and doors will begin to open on your behalf. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. So your reputation means a lot. Your character means a lot. Your integrity means a lot. And that's why we should not always be concerned about gift, but we should be more concerned about character. Because the Bible says that our gift will make room for us, but we have to understand that our character will keep us in those doors. Your, your, room will make room, your gift will make room for you, but your character might close the door. I'm, 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 I'm going hard already and I'm trying to close, I'm, I'm trying to stop. Your character, your character will, will close some doors that your gift will make room for. Here it is. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, a good name is rather to be chosen than of great riches. And so the Bible says that after it is that they speak well of him, after it is that they speak well of Daniel and his brethren, not only did they speak well of Daniel, but his brethren. That speaks of the fact that he was around people who were of the same type of energy. He was around people who had the same type of mindset. He was around people that had the same type of, 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 of knowledge and wisdom. We have to surround ourselves with people who we want or see potential in. You, birds of a feather, what, flock together. So if you hanging around with people who are not smart, chances are, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to call you, you know, that word, but chances are you might not be as smart either. If you want to hang around with people who are going somewhere, or if you want to go somewhere, you have to hang around people who are going somewhere, who God is taking places. Understand, people of God, that after it is that he speaks well of Daniel and his, his, his brother, and the Bible says that the king appointed them to a daily provision of the king's meat and 
of the wine which they drink. Now it is that God promotes them so much just based off of the, the, the speaking of someone else. The Bible says in verse 7 that uh, now they are brought into this, this place. And the Bible says that the first thing that people do, the first thing that they, the prince does is give them names that are not theirs. Watch out for those that desire to give you a new identity. Watch out for those who want to take away your identity. Watch out for those that wants to speak against what it is that God has already identified you to be. Because maybe it might be because they are ashamed of their own identity. Maybe it's because they are ashamed of who they have become. Maybe it's because of it's because they are ashamed of who they are and they want to now put on you their shame. They want to put on you the shame of them. They want to put on you the shame of their name. They want to put on you the shame of who they are. Understand the Bible says uh, that they changed the name. They changed the names of Daniel, uh, uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They changed their names. And the name changes are a good example of attempted brainwashing. They wanted to brainwash them because if you understand who you are, no one can tell you anything differently. They wanted to brainwash these people, young people, so that they would never get into the, the mindset of knowing who they are. And, and many of you, the devil wants to come at your identity. And that's why you, you, you might be in, a, in, a, in an identity crisis because the enemy wants to take you away before you really understand your purpose in God. Because the devil knows that if you get to the point where you understand your identity and you know who God has called you to be, that there's nothing that can stop you, that nothing can be against you, that no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Once you understand your identity, the devil can't stop you. Understand here that it is a form of brainwashing. It is a form of brainwashing. And also understand this, that the names that they gave them, the meaning of those names were for other gods. Because Daniel... Daniel, the name Daniel means God is my judge, but the name that they gave him, Belteshazzar, meant Bel will protect. Mm. So Hananiah, the name Hananiah means God is gracious, but Shadrach means it is, it is an inspiration to the sun, to the sun God. Mishael means God is without equal, but Meshach means belonging to Aku. These are these are names that were meaning to other gods that they worship. Azariah means the Lord is my helper, but, you know, I heard Bishop say this, a bad Negro or a Bendigo is a servant of Nego. These are other gods in which they serve. So not only were they trying to change their identity, but they were trying to change the, the meaning of who they were. They were trying to change the God in which they served. And many people will try to place on you another thing so that you can serve someone else. And I want to let you know that if you stand flat-footed on what God has placed in your spirit, if you stay flat-footed in your purpose and in your assignment, that God is going to bless you. Here it is that even though, watch this, even though the names of them change, when you read it through the scriptures, you don't even see sometimes the names that, that are, they are changed to. You still see Daniel. You still see Shadrach. You still see. So as we're going in through the chapters, I want, I want to take us through the chapters here so we can get to chapter six. Understand chapter two, the Bible says, chapter one, we are introduced to Daniel. We're introduced to his friends. The Bible allows us to understand in chapter two that now Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. 
Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. Here it is. The first issue is Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And the Bible says, the king answered in verse five, it says, the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is not gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made dunghill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation. The Bible allows us to understand that he calls in the musician, magicians and he calls in the astrologers. He calls in all of the wise men. And the Bible allows us to understand that these wise men cannot interpret or show him the dream. They cannot interpret nor show him the dream. And the Bible says in verse 12 that as the king is about to throw everybody away, he's about to kill everybody because they didn't understand the dream or give them an interpretation. The Bible says that Daniel stands up and volunteers himself to understand or interpret or show Nebuchadnezzar the dream. And the Bible says that Daniel begins to go back to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and he begins to pray. Verse 16, it says, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known unto Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would that they would desire mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Understand that there is a power in prayer. There's a power in prayer. Daniel goes and he says, look, he says, I'm not going to rely on my own strength, but now I'm going to go to a power that is higher than mine. I know they don't serve the God I serve, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to pray to God and I'm going to ask God to give me the wisdom, give me the gift of interpretation. Give me the gift of this dream. Give me this gift so I won't perish with the rest of the people. The Bible says that the Lord gives Daniel the interpretation in a night vision. And the Bible says that when Daniel wakes up in verse 23, he says, I thank thee and praise thee. Whenever God answers a prayer, you better praise him. Daniel begins to praise him. He says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me this wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we have, what, what we desired of thee. For thou has now made known unto us the king's matters. Hallelujah. God will always give you the wisdom you need in every situation that you face. Your ears just need to be open unto what the Lord is saying. And maybe that might be an issue. Maybe our ears or our eyes are not open to what the Lord is saying because God is always speaking. I remember, praise the name of God, how uh, I was I was growing up and Bishop, he gave me a little book um, and, and, you know, just to write my sermons in whenever I had a thought. And one of the notes that he wrote on the on the on the front of it was uh, the Lord is always speaking. Our ears just has to be open. And that is very true. The Lord is always speaking. Whether he's not just speaking to you, he might be speaking through someone else, or he might be just speaking through his word in terms of you opening up the word of God and reading it. But God is always speaking. It is up to us to be tuned in to what the Lord is saying. Here it is that the Bible says that Daniel begins to go through the dream and tells him the dream. And as he tells him the dream, the Bible says in verse 46, I'm moving along swiftly. Bible says in verse 46 that then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer 
sweet odors unto him. And the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is, the, is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. It is Nebuchadnezzar now, the one that does not serve the true and living God, that says unto Daniel, look, it is really your God that is the revealer of secrets. It is your God that is the revealer of the secrets. It is your God who is the God of all gods. Your gift is supposed to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If your gift does not bring people to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, something is wrong. Because all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise belongs to Jesus Christ. Here it is that the gift that was on Daniel brings a knowledge to Nebuchadnezzar that he has never had before in his life. He realizes that the king or the God of Daniel is the true and living God. Just write in the chat and say, I serve the true and living God. I serve the God of Daniel. I serve the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Here it is, we're moving into chapter three. And the Bible begins to allow us, to, before we even move into chapter three, after it is that he remembers or, 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 or says to him that your God is the God of, of, of all gods, the Bible says that he promotes Daniel. He promotes Daniel and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors of all the wise men of Babylon. And then what happens is Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Understand that his testimony or his gift now not only brings Nebuchadnezzar to the knowledge of who the true God is, but it brings Nebuchadnezzar to a place where now I want to promote you over everyone in Babylon. Understand, people of God, in chapter 3 is very familiar scripture, so I'm not going to deal with so much on it. But understand, praise the name of God, that whenever you elevate, there is a new attack. Whenever you elevate, watch out for the new attack. New levels never come without a new attack. If there is no attack, watch this. Maybe you did not elevate. If there is no attack in your life, maybe you're stagnant. Maybe you're in the same place you was. And if, my God, in this place, many of you have been dealing with the same attack. You have not learned anything from this attack. And that's why you're stagnant. But God wants to take you up. God wants to elevate you just a little higher. Here it is, people of God. In chapter 3, the Bible says that there is a cry that was made. Nebuchadnezzar and the king, the king, he made an image of gold. We understand that he made this image of gold and the Bible begins to explain to us and give us this intelligence that Nebuchadnezzar says that at the time that you hear the music, that you ought to bow down and worship this image which I have set up. And if you do not worship this image which I have set up, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to cast them in the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Watch this. We all know the story. I, I don't need to go uh, uh, in depth with it. But understand, the Bible says that he sees, the music goes off. And, you know, the three evil boys, they ain't worrying about the music because they're not going to bow down to this golden image. The Bible says that, the king gets word that they did not bow down. Verse 15 says um, that he confronts them and says, now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbat, the sautry, the decimer, and all kinds of music, that ye fall down and worship the golden image which thou has, which I have set up. He says, but if ye worship not, 
ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And this is the key in this verse. It says, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? I want to let you know, you should never test the power of God. Nebuchadnezzar says, who is this God? Now, I'm, I'm going to let you know, they should have, maybe they should have said, look, in chapter two, you already seen the power of my God. But here it is that he's still testing the power of God. So watch the response of the people. Response of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, an answer to the king and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Their response is a response of faith and trust in God. He says, look, I know that you're going to try to throw us in this burning fiery furnace, but I'm still not going to bow because I'm not sinning against you. I'm sinning against God if I bow to any other God. And, and let me just make it plain and simple. A God or something of that sort is anything that you put before God. If you put your car before your time with God, your car can be a God. Money can be a God. Your house can be a God. Your job can be a God. Whatever it is that you put before God, it can take the place of God. And what, what they're showing us is that we should not put anything before God. They believe God. They trust God. They said, throw us into this fiery furnace. And I know this might be elementary, but he says, throw us into this fiery furnace. Understand, whenever you take a stand for something against someone, they would, the way they see you before will change. Understand, people of God, that Nebuchadnezzar looks at them, looks at them. After it is that they take this stand, looks at them after it is that they take this stand. And the Bible tells us, people of God, that he looks at them. And as they're in the fiery furnace, as they're in the fiery furnace, the Bible says that he looks in the fiery furnace and he sees that there's four men in there. There are four men in the fire. He threw three of them in. But now he sees four. They take a stand against Nebuchadnezzar. They take a stand against his rules and regulations. He takes, they take a stand against what he has placed. And the Bible allows us to understand, people of God, that as he looks in the furnace, hallelujah, he sees them in the furnace, and there's four men in the furnace. Now watch this. Verse 23 says, he threw them bound in the midst of the fire. But verse 25 says, he sees them loose. God can bring freedom to the bound. God can bring freedom to the bound. Let me just declare that again. God can bring freedom to the bound. If you are bound, God can bring freedom to you. Not only are we talking about physical uh, uh, bindedness, but in your mind, if you are bound in your mind, God can bring freedom to it. Hallelujah. I just want someone to say, I have freedom. Just write in the chat there and say, I have freedom. God is going to bring freedom to the things that's been binding you up because God wants you to be free to worship him. He wants you to be free to praise him. He wants you to be free to open your mouth. He wants you to be free to give him glory. He wants you to be free to do what it is that he has called you to do and has placed 
on your life and for you to do. Here it is, people of God, that as they Nebuchadnezzar looks in the fire, the Bible says that he sees, he sees them in the fire, there's four men, and he calls them and come and they come out of the fire. And the Bible says that in verse 28, that Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God. Hallelujah. The Bible says and continues to say, therefore I will make a decree that every people nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dung hill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Your testimony, people of God, after people, because you must understand people are watching you just like Nebuchadnezzar was watching them in the fire. People are watching you. And let me just bust your bubble. Boop. Let me just bust your bubble right there and let you know that people want you to fail. There are people that want you to fail. There are people that are waiting for you to fail. My Lord in here. There are people that are waiting for you to fail. There are people that are waiting for you to be cast down. There are people that are waiting for you, hallelujah to God, to be in the ditch that they felt that you were going to go in. But your testimony is about to bring people to Christ because people are not going to believe that you came out of what you came out of. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. What you are dealing with right now is not the end of your story. Your current situation is not your final destination. God has something greater for your life. God has something greater than the situation that you're in right now. Hallelujah. Lord, please shut the lion's mouth. Here it is. Praise the name of God. But the Bible says that the king, in verse 30, promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Sometimes promotion comes through your testimony. God is about to promote you through your testimony. God is about to promote you through the things that he has brought you out of. And let me just declare to you that what God has brought you out of is, is a clear indication of what you are anointed for. Your place of struggle is the place where God has anointed you for. Woo! The place that God has brought you out of, it can be a clear indication of the purpose of God that is on your life. God, because you, you can't take anyone anywhere you haven't been. So where God has taken you out of is the place that he now wants you to reach back to, to bring people out of. Here it is, people of God. The Nebuchadnezzar has another dream in verse, in, verse, in chapter four. We're going to go, we're gonna go to chapter five. Bear with me for a little bit here. Here it is that King Nebuchadnezzar has another vision of a tree. The Bible says, praise the name of God, that Nebuchadnezzar now, he, he's still wanting to know the interpretation of now this vision. And the Bible says that Daniel tells him the interpretation of the dream. And the Bible says that what it is that Daniel says unto him actually happens to Nebuchadnezzar. Hallelujah. And the Bible begins to go on and to tell us now that Daniel, whose name was Belteshar, was astonished for one hour and his thoughts troubled him. And the Bible says the king spake unto Belteshar and let him let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble you. And the Bible begins to go on and lets us know that, Nebuchadnezzar, that Daniel is now using his gift. He's using the gift that God has placed on his life. And let me just declare to you that God wants you to use the gift that is on your life. Hallelujah. The Bible begins to go on and to share with us, praise the name of God, that now he's using his gift. He's using the things, amen, that God has placed on his life. Verse 30 says, the king spake and said, 
is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by might of my power for and for the honor of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O Nebuchadnezzar, to thee is it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. I want to bring this out to you. Nebuchadnezzar was so full of pride. Nebuchadnezzar was so full of pride. And the reason why I want to bring this out to you, why I wanted to bring this out to you in the studies is because you have to learn how to remain humble. You have to learn how to stay humble. The Bible says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Here it is that the Bible says the same hour was the thing fulfilled that, that, that Daniel spoke of. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven out from man. And the same thing was fulfilled. But verse 37 is the one that interests me in chapter 4. The Bible says, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase hallelujah god has a way to humble you god has a way to humble you god had that way to humble nebuchadnezzar here it is people of god that now we move from king nebuchadnezzar and we go to king belshazzar not Daniel, the new name, but this new king. And here it is, praise the name of God, that this new king, he's drinking the wine before the thousands. The Bible says he has a great feast. And he sees now that there are some writing on the wall. He sees a finger and they're writing on the wall. And now he is looking for an interpreter of what is being written on the wall. And the Bible says, praise the name of God, that the queen speaks up again. There is somebody that's speaking up for Daniel. The Bible says in, verse ch in, in chapter 5, verse 10, it says, Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and, and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor the countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom and whom is the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of the father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of gods was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy king made master of the magicians and the astrologers and the soothsayers. Another person is speaking up for Daniel. And the Bible says, now let Daniel be called and he shall show the interpretation. Let me just stop right here and prophesy to everyone that receive it. God just told me to tell you and placed it in my spirit just now. The Lord just told me to tell you that your name is getting ready to be called. Oh, yes, Lord. God just said your name is getting ready to be called. Your name is getting ready to be called. People looked over you. People said you wasn't going to make it. People said that you wasn't going to be this and you wasn't going to be that. But God just sent me to tell you that your name is about to be called. God is about to hand pick you out of the rest. That people, the people that said that you wasn't going to be anything are going to be the ones that now you're going to minister to. Here it is that Daniel's name was called. And the Bible says, hallelujah to God, that his name was called. Now understand that these astrologers was, had all the knowledge. Hallelujah. These astrologers had wisdom. These astrologers was given this gift. These astrologers had the same thing that Daniel had in terms of knowing how to interpret the dreams. But understand, other people might have the gift, but if God's hand is on your life, you will be the one that's chosen. You are the one that is different because of the anointing that is on your life.
You are the one that's different because God's hand is on your life. Other people might have the same sets as you, but it, that doesn't matter because the hand of God is because of the hand of God that is on your life. You are going to be the one that is chosen out of the rest. The Bible begins to let us know, praise the name of God, that we go now after all of this, after all of this is being done. Daniel realizes and he interprets the writing. He interprets the writing of what, what was happening. And the Bible begins to blow our mind because as all of this is happening, as all of this is happening, people are watching the matriculation of Daniel. People are watching how Daniel was being blessed. People are watching how Daniel is going forth in his purpose and in his gift. And now that brings us to chapter six. It brings us now to chapter six. After all of this is happening, after the favor of God has been following Daniel, after the favor of God has been following them, now we get to chapter six and there is a plot that is against Daniel. Hallelujah. The attack comes now. The Bible says in verse in chapter six, verse three, it says, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. I just want to pronounce an excellent spirit on everyone that will receive it. Hallelujah. Everyone that want to receive an excellent spirit, just lift your hands right where you are. 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 Right where you are. I pronounce an excellent spirit upon you. Here it is that the Bible says that he had an excellent spirit and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Here is the attack. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion or something against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But the Bible says, but they could not find any occasion, no fault in him. Don't that sound like Jesus Christ? No fault in him. But people will seek to try to see what is wrong with you. That's why you cannot afford to be connected to the wrong people in this season. Because there are people that just want to hear your bag or your closet of skeletons and just want to talk about the things that you tell them. You got to have the spirit of discernment in this season. Hallelujah. Because there are people that want to take you down. There are people that want to take you down. Here it is, people of God, that there is a plot against Daniel. There's a plot against Daniel. The Bible says in verse 9, Wherefore King Darius signed a writing. He signed a writing. And he, he, he signed the writing and the decree. The decree was that if there was anyone that was praying to another God for the next 30 days, that they will be cast immediately into a den for the lions. These people that found no fault in Daniel found something for the king to sign so that they can get Daniel into the lion's den. They plotted against him. And we as believers of God, we know that people plotting against us is not foreign. There are people that are going to be plotting against you just because you're anointed. And here it is, people of God, that verse 9 says, Wherefore the king Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. Mm. Watch this. Again, he says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. Now, Daniel knew what the writing was about. Daniel knew that the writing was, if, you, if they found anyone praying to another God, but the God that they serve, that they will be cast in the lion's den. Here it is, people of God, that Daniel understood the writing, and he still prayed before his God. Hallelujah. Daniel knew exactly what they were going to do to those that were found doing what he did. And he still did it 
because he had no fear in them. Once you know that you serve the one true and living God, it allows you to have no fear. The Bible says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41 and 10. He says, fear thou not. We understand that because we serve God, we have no fear. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us out of them all. Daniel has this faith in God. Daniel has this faith and he says, you know, I'm still going to pray. And the Bible allows us to understand that they look at him. And the Bible says that the men assembled and found Daniel praying, making supplication before his God. And they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree and pretty much told the king, look, Praise the name of God. I want you to understand. He said, I want you to understand that you are the one that signed this decree. Now you have to do what this decree says. And the Bible allows us to understand that these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, O king, the law that you signed, the decree that you signed, you must not change by it because it is established. And the Bible says, then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. They cast him into the den of lions. They are trying to pull him down. They're trying to pull his influence down. They're trying to pull him down into what they want him to be. And let me just give you this nugget. People who are trying to pull you down are already beneath you. People who are pulling you down are already beneath you. Don't waste your time with people who are already beneath you. Don't waste your time with people who are already beneath you. Now, we understand, praise the name of God, that we're not better than anybody else. But people, haters, and people that talk about you are already beneath you. And you don't have to worry about that. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. Here it is, people of God. The Bible says that now Daniel is in this, this den of lions. And the Bible says that as he is in this den of lions, that the king goes back home. Hallelujah. The king goes back home. And the Bible says that sleep left from him. Sleep leaves from the king. And the Bible says that it then in verse 19, it says, then the king arose very early in the morning and went in hate unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, the Bible says he cried on, with a voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thy service continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Here it is that he goes to the den of lions. Can you imagine this king going to the den of lions, knowing what the lions are capable of doing? And he still goes to the den of lions, speaking down to the den, and can you imagine what it is that he is expecting to hear? Maybe he's not expecting to hear anything. But here it is in verse 21 that amazes to me, people of God, because after it is that he speaks into the lion's den, the Bible says, then said Daniel unto the king. There is now a voice that comes from the den of lions. There's a voice that comes from the ditch. What people have expected to kill you has only made you stronger, wiser, and better. The Bible tells us that there is a voice that comes out from the den. And Daniel said, my God has sent his angels. My God has sent his angels and have shut the lion's mouth. Here it is that the Bible says that the Lord shut the lion's mouth. Can you imagine Daniel going in this den, knowing what the lions are capable of doing himself, and still believes that God is going to protect him? The Bible says he shut the lion's mouth, that they have no hurt, they have not hurt me. For so for as much as before him, innocency was found in me. The reason why the Lord shut the mouth of the lions was because he found innocence in Daniel. 
And let me just pose this question to you. Can God find innocence in you? Here it is that he found innocence in Daniel. And that is the reason why he closed the lion's mouth. And the Bible says that the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no man of hurt was found upon him. Watch this. It says, because he believed in his God. He believed in his God. I want to declare to you that the only way God is about to protect you is because of your faith in him. Your faith cannot waver. No matter how hard the situation is, no matter how crazy the situation is, if you only believe in God, God will do it. This is the other thing that amazes me, people of God, and I'm going to leave you. I know I took a lot of time. Here it is. The Bible says in verse 24, and the king commanded that they brought those men which accused Daniel, those haters, those people that plotted against him. The Bible says that they asked for those men who accused Daniel and cast them into the den of lions, not only them, but their children and their wives. And the Bible says that the lions had the mastery of them and break all of their bones in pieces or ever they came out at the bottom of the den. Not only did God, maybe not only did God shut the lion's mouth, but he changed their taste. He changed the taste of the lions because the lions, watch this, they were they are programmed to eat. And they were programmed, they should have been programmed to eat Daniel. But because the Lord shut their mouth, God changed their taste for Daniel and gave them more than what Daniel was. Daniel was only one man. The Bible says that these people that accused Daniel, the Bible says not only did they go inside the lion's den, the Bible says that their children and their wives go in the lion's den. Hallelujah. God is about to shut the lion's mouth because there are some things that people have tried to devour you with. There are some situations that people have tried to speak about you or tell people about you and gossip about you. But I'm claiming, I'm coming to tell you that you're about to have victory in Jesus Christ because the God that we serve is about to shut the mouths of the naysayers. God is about to shut the mouths of your haters. God is about to shut the mouths of those who have something evil to say about you. And this we know that all all things work together for the good. The lions then work together for the good of Daniel because after it is that he comes out of this lion, this den of lions. Can you imagine one man coming out of a den of lions with no hurt, with no scratches and talking regular? I don't know about you, but if I was in a lion's den, I wouldn't be talking all crazy and, and, and with a loud voice. I would probably be talk with a little you know, crazy little little girl voice. But here it is, praise the name of God, that the, he is talking because he knew that the God that he served was able to protect them. How do you talk about your God? How do you talk about the God that you serve? Do you talk with assertiveness? Do you talk with a certainty? And this is the reason why we have to have a testimony in God. Because when we go through, we understand that now is not just what I read in the Bible, but when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that God has been good and that I have a testimony. How do you speak of your God? Here it is that Daniel has come out of this lion's den. And he comes out with a testimony that no one has ever had before. And that's the good thing about the Lord. That even though there might be people that have the same conditions as you, they don't have the same testimony as you. <laughs> My God in this place. God has given you your own unique testimony. God has given you your own unique story that no one can duplicate. Hallelujah. No one can duplicate the testimony that you have 
in Jesus Christ. And no one can have duplicated the testimony that Daniel has in his Lord. And it strengthens his faith to continue to believe in the God that he serves. I just wanted to encourage everyone on this morning that God is getting ready to shut the lion's mouth. He's getting ready to shut the lion's mouth on your behalf. It doesn't matter what the devil has spoken over your life. God is about to turn it around for your good. I, I pray that you receive this word, but as we're moving forward, I just want you to put in the chat as we go to the altar call, Bishop us. I just want you, praise the name of God, just to put in the chat just a prayer request that you have. If you have any prayer requests, because understand, I could imagine that Daniel entering into this lion's den, fearful of what might happen. Hallelujah. With the three Hebrew boys and the fiery furnace, huh. the fire was not made for them to be consumed. The purpose of the fire was made for the chains to be consumed. Your trials is meant for your chains to be consumed. Your trials is meant for you to come out with freedom and to not be bound anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to speak to people who needs to be free this morning. That needs to be free. That needs to be free in your mind. That needs to be free in your spirit, man. That needs to be free. The Lord sent me this morning just to encourage you. I know it wasn't much. I know it was elementary. But the Lord has spoken to me. Just want to let you know that God has come to free you this morning through the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every person that is under the sound of my voice. Thank you for the word that you have spoken to us this morning. Father, I pray for freedom in the minds of the people of God right now. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Let us speak out of our mouth freedom. Let us speak out of our spirit freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for the word that you have given us. Thank you for the faith that we can see in Daniel. Thank you for the faith that we can see in his companions. Thank you for the faith that we can see even in our own lives. Lord, allow us to lay lay a hold, oh God, to the confession of our faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Father, right now that our faith will not waver, that our faith, Lord, will not fail us. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, Lord, our faith looks up to thee, O Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Hear us when we call. Lord, I thank you right now that some trust in horses and some in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, for they are brought down and fallen, and we are risen and stand upright. And we say, save, Lord, hear us. Let the king hear us when we call. Thank you that you hear us when we call on you, that there's nothing, oh God, that can stop us. Let our faith not fail us now. And for everyone that's dealing with the situation, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to our faith, bring us out of it right now. Elevate our minds so that we can come out of what we're dealing with. Elevate our minds. Let our minds be free. Let this mind be in us, which was also in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that freedom belongs to us. Therefore, let us walk in the vocation where have Christ has made us free. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We are free in you. And we thank you that who the Son sets free is free indeed. Set us free in our minds. Set us free in our hearts. Thank you for this word that you have given us. And I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that every naysayer that you will shut their mouth, every hater that you will shut their mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus, Every person, oh God, that has spoken against us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, what they said about us made us stronger. What they said about us made us wiser. What they said about us made us better. And we thank you for the increase that you are getting ready to build in us. Thank you for the grace and for the faith that you're getting ready to bring and build in our life. Thank you, Lord, that these trials that come, 
are coming with glory. There shall be glory after this. For the present time of this circumstance, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you are getting ready to bring glory out of our situations, glory out of our life. There's getting ready to be an anointing that's going to be placed up on our life, just like the olive has to go through the pressing, just like the olive and the grape has to go through the pressing in order to get the result. Father, take us through the pressing, but Lord, let our faith not waver in you. Let us go through the pressing and know that he that hath begun a good work in us, he shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that the pressing has not come to destroy us, but it came to make us better. There's a greater anointing on our life. The greater the trial, the greater the worship, the greater the anointing, the greater the power, the greater that God has for us. Thank you for the greater. Thank you for the greater. Thank you for the greater that you have for us. And I pray for every person in the name of Jesus under the sound of my voice that's believing you for greater in their life. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, even for those who are making steps to be baptized, even for those that want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, those that want to better their life, Father, in the name of Jesus, what other way to better our lives than to turn to you and to choose you in our life? Father, I pray for them right now, and I pray against the hand of the enemy. Devil, you are rebuked right now. You are under our feet. You have no victory. The victory belongs to us. The devil is defeated. God is exalted and the victory belongs to us. Satan, the Lord God rebuke thee right now. Get behind us right now in the name of Jesus. We take power over you. Oh, Yabakama We take power over you right now. In the name of Jesus, we are free and we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, we believe you. We believe you. We believe you right now and we thank you for the greatness that you have for us. And we believe this prayer and we say, amen. It is so in Jesus name. Amen. If you believe that you are free, I dare you to give God a free praise right where you are right now. Hallelujah. Let the devil know that I'm free because my hands are lifted. Let the devil know I'm free because my mouth is open. Let the devil know I'm free because I'm not bound in my mind anymore, but I'm free. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. We honor the Lord for you and we thank you for this time in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, people of God, my brothers and sisters. We thank and praise God for every single one of you that have joined us today. As you can tell, um, I am not where I normally am on a Sunday morning, but to God be the glory. I feel the presence of the Lord even here right now. And I want to thank and praise God for our son, Minister Hezekiah Tinley, that did a double header today. He gave a word at nine o'clock and then he came and gave another word at 12 o'clock. The Lord has used him mightily today and we are so blessed of the Lord. Minister Seth said it right when the, he mentioned that the Lord has blessed me with phenomenal sons. I want to thank and praise God for the sons of Beulah Tabernacle, the ministers of Beulah Tabernacle who are growing exponentially. God is using them in a mighty way. Their gifts are making room and their character keeps them in the room. And I thank and praise God for the mighty hand of God on their lives. Beulah Tabernacle, I love you all. I thank God for every single one of you. Um, you don't know how much you mean to me. Um, you make my job as a pastor some one of the most enriching and one of the most fulfilling things that I have ever had in my life. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I thank God for you all in Jesus' name. And if there be nothing else, we're going to end with this prayer. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord lift his face toward thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you. 
Love you much. Have a blessed rest of your day. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.